Hello, this is Scott. Welcome to my YouTube channel on data science analytics, where I cover different topics on um, relating from a conceptual view of those subjects, and then some hands-on of commercial and open source platforms. Today we're talking about open source R, and we're continuing on with our time series um, flow. And today it's going to be ARIMA ETS and cross validation. So, a couple of introductory remarks, and then we'll jump right into R in our studio. So, um, this is a comparison of ETS and ARIMA models. We've been talking about both in previous episodes. And the source of this is Hyman and Anathosopoulos. <laughs> I can do that when I'm not recording. I can actually pronounce that name. I uh, apologize for that. But uh, this is the source. And as they say that, uh, you know, it's a commonly held myth that ARIMA models are more general than exponential smoothing. Um, while linear exponential smoothing uh, models are special cases of ARIMA models, the nonlinear exponential smoothing models have no equivalent ARIMA counterpoint parts. So, um, and, well, on the other hand, there are also some ARIMA models that have no exponential smoothing counterparts. So if you did a Venn diagram, there are sections that are outside the scope. There is one set is not completely overarching of the other set. So it's useful to have both. That's the takeaway there. So let's jump into our studio, and I've got some code up, and I've actually already loaded the FPP2 package from Dr. Hyman and Dr. A, as well as the uh, the forecast. And so the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to construct a function, two parameter function, um, and it's going to be this this forecast ETS um, model. So if we create that function, and then we're going to create a section, a uh, second function, FRIMA, um, as well, and we'll use this for uh, cross validation. And we've seen this error data in the past, um, and so we're going to be using that as well. So I'm going to um, this in just a second to this. Uh, 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 using this TSCB function as part of this FPP library too. But let me go ahead and execute that. Well, come on. And then um, again, I'm going to uh, create a variable E1 uh, with this uh, TSCV, this cross validation, and this E2 as well. So let's look at the uh, mean for the E1, and we can see here that this is 0.786, and then we can do the mean of the, the second, and that's uh, 9, 9 9.6. So we can, we can look at those different uh, and what we just did essentially is um, the, these means using using this uh, cross validation function these are the uh, mean squared errors so uh, the MSC for for these two and uh, we can see that the um, e1 um, for the fats function that we created right this is the time this is the exponential uh, time series, we, we actually uh, have a lower MSC for that particular function. Okay, and then um, if we wanna look at that and create a forecast, we can create a forecast with that um, since it has the, the lowest uh, mean square error and that's what the DTS uh, plot looks like for that. And then let's look at a different data set. Let's look at the CMET data set that we've looked at before. 
um, and go back, uh, start it with 1988 and just set up the data. And then we're going to use a training set of 20 years for this, create a train um, data set. And then we're going to fit with the, the ARIMA function. So we can see here, um, here's our, our parameters uh, using this auto ARIMA. It's, it's actually coming back with seasonal uh, ARIMA, a 212. Um, well, I'm sorry, it's a, it's a Q, uh, P is two, uh, little P is two, zero, zero, and then the seasonal component, remember, uh, is two, one, one, uh, with H4. So, and if I check the residuals for that, I can look at the residual functions there. And then for comparison, I can do an ETS model and check the residuals there. Um, so on the, if we look at the, like the corrected Akaiki here on the ETS, it's negative 0.641 uh, versus on the ARIMA, uh, which is minus 107. Um, and then we can generate forecasts with, with both of those. So let me do that now. And, and get the, um, the different statistics for the error rates for these particular two models. And this, so what I did is I, I trained on one set, right? Uh, and I'm, I'm actually looking at the residuals uh, using my, my forecasted set and then looking at the different, the, the error rates um, in the test set for these, for these two things. So if I look at the, Test set for the the first model here. Um, I can see I've got root mean square errors of 0.197 versus 0.183. The MAE is 0.167 versus 0.153, and then 0.69 versus 7.65. So I can see that the second model, the CTS model, actually has a lower um, lower error rate on the test set. And so once I determine that, then I'll, I'll want to pick the champion of those two models for my uh, forecast. And so that's what I'm going to do with this last command. I'm going to generate the forecast. I'm going to use the ETS model to do that. And so there we go. So Interesting in that, again, you know, you, you think we've been progressing through ETS was something that we did a ways back, and then we got into ARIMA and seasonal ARIMA, and you think as you progress that you get into more sophisticated models, you get into better models, but we've shown here that there is not a one universal uh, modeling paradigm that, that works uh, across all data. So that's the reason that we'll have data scientists for, for quite a while and statisticians and, and people that apply analytics and um, because there is no uh, universal modeling technique. Um, I think Kohavi was one of the ones that said that. So anyway, with that, I'll close. I uh, hope you can join me next time and we'll see.